Sevő Gyula, a Julius K9 termékek feltalálója. My name is Julius Shebo. I am the founder of Julius K9 and I work as an inventor and as the CEO of the company. We have 500 employees as well as engaging around 300 off-site subcontractors. We share a pet care market within the European market that's worth 36 billion euros every year. The dog equipment segment is only a small part of this, but it still equates to annual sales of around 1 billion euro a year. We are active in this marketplace with the clear aim of trying to be the best. Over the last 20 years, we have grown from occupying a garage of 20 square meters into a large enterprise in factory style warehouses. We have had to learn many lessons. We realized that we needed to care for our team at the same time as working hard to enable the rapid growth of our business. None of us were born to be entrepreneurs, and at the start we didn't know about what was involved in trading. We learned firsthand about the many trials and tribulations of running a company, from the small daily challenges to the larger long-term problems. Perhaps this is why we find it easy to educate newcomers to our business. We have been through it all ourselves. In 1994, following a twist of fate, I moved to Austria with my wife. We established our company in Hungary at this time, while we were still working in Austria. My wife worked as a nurse, while I worked as a dog trainer. I soon learned that a dog training school is a type of social work, providing many different types of support to humans and dogs alike. My affection for dogs had started many years previously. The name of our company links to both this time in Austria as well as to my earlier life in Hungary. I was called Julius by the Austrian trainers who I came to know. This was derived from the Hungarian name Jula, which is my Christian name. The second part of the company name goes back further. I got my first dog when I lived at number 9 Keller Street in Budapest as a young man. Our arrival in Austria gave us an opportunity to get a glimpse of the world of service dogs. When doing some work for the Austrian Armed Forces, we adopted the attitude that they could ask for anything and we would do everything. We were diligent to this maxim and we did our best to deliver reliably. In 1997, we started our equipment manufacturing enterprise under the name of Julius Export 2000 BT. At that time, it was extraordinary that a small company would deliver its goods across borders using its own company car rather than a commercial delivery service. In the following decade, as this work developed, we had to learn to deal with the bureaucratic systems of freight forwarders and customs officers. It was not easy. Sometimes we were forced to turn back from the border because of the lack of a particular stamp on a piece of paper. However, the Austrian police and other organisations started us on a route which meant that we soon had to choose what we would manufacture and distribute. Would it be military technology, including protective clothing, bulletproof vests, or would we specialise in dog equipment? I had two problems with military technology. First, it was difficult to plan ahead. Everything had to be put out to tender, causing a constant sense of doubt about the future. Would we or would we not get the contract this time? The second problem was the simple fact that morally we felt challenged. We didn't like the idea of being a beneficiary of armed conflict. By contrast, we liked dogs, and we could see that the underlying theme of dogs being kept as companion animals was based on love. People love dogs, and dogs love people. Our underlying appreciation of dogs was one of the main factors that determined the direction of our enterprise. From the start, we had been working hard for dogs in many different ways. We were running our own dog shelter with 60 dogs, and earlier we had helped to build and to develop around four other dog shelters. As time passed, we gradually stopped manufacturing most of the military equipment that we had developed. We only retained the small area that was linked to dogs, manufacturing the most professional dog equipment available for animals working for the armed forces. We were the first company in Europe to create bulletproof and puncture-resistant vests for the military dogs. This was one positive consequence of our earlier involvement with military technology. As time passed, around 2008, it had become complicated operating with Hungarian workers, whilst we as directors were based in Austria. We decided that we could trust the Austrian and German markets to continue with our Austrian partner, and my wife and myself moved back home to Hungary. This was a challenging economic time. The complete collapse of the textile and leather industry in Hungary made it almost impossible to continue in business. As an example, I remember standing at the end of a machine at one of our Hungarian material manufacturers waiting for every centimetre of material to be rolled off the machine. 
while other people were starting to disassemble the machine because it needed to be sold since the company had gone bankrupt. It was a manual process and corners were being cut in a way that was far from ideal. The situation was the same in other parts of the manufacturing process. Times have now changed. There is no lack of workers, but there are no needlewomen, no weavers, no textile dyers, no sewing machine repairmen, and there are no places, no training centres or schools where these jobs are taught. This means that not only are there no qualified workers, but there's no training for anyone to be able to become skilled in these specialised areas. This is why I eventually bought automatic sewing machines for our newest plants. These can be operated without needing extra qualifications, so that any man or woman can use them. This methodology has been a successful way of running a successful business in a region which had a lot of unemployed people who wanted to work, but they were not qualified in any particular skills. At that time, we had to set up everything on our own, or by closely cooperating with others. We had to be involved with even the smallest details of manufacturing. So I became a strap manufacturer, not by learning it at school or college, but by standing beside a workbench and doing it myself. It was challenging. At times we were working in sub-zero temperatures, in uninsulated garages, in order to guarantee that we could deliver the products as promised. In 2008, after the complete collapse of the leather industries in Hungary, we started to focus 90 to 95% of our attention on the textile industry. This is where our most successful product, the dog harness, has its origins. We put this equipment on the market after initially creating it at the request of the Austrian police. They had begun to use the dog harness for their service units and we called it the K9 power harness. We discovered at that time that K9 was a registered trademark in the United States. The term K9 power harness sounded particularly appropriate for military dogs and we expanded on the utilitarian aspects of the harness. We fitted them with visible devices such as bags, flashlights, GPS and cameras that could be attached. We tried to build in any requests from the service units, creating a uniquely adaptable type of harness. The product was so successful that it ultimately led to a serious threat to part of our business. We had an Austrian partner who we trusted with our representation on the German market. Overnight, they started to import copy products from China, distributing them in stores under our brand name. This was the start of our realization of the importance of creating worldwide protection for our intellectual properties, along with a deeper understanding of competition law. We engaged in legal intervention, which continued for four to five years. After some early failures, we finally won a complete victory. The important lesson that we learned was that if we don't protect our latest innovations and developments in all possible ways, we will become vulnerable to low-cost, bulk-produced Chinese competition. Earlier in 2005, we had made several attempts to protect our brand, but we had found the methodology very expensive, which is why we hadn't continued. In 2009, after the Austrian situation, we tried getting agencies to write the proofs for our patents. But as the inventor, I could see that these were not perfect. So in the end, I spent my own Christmas holidays that year writing out the patents for our new models. On the 2nd of January 2010, at 9 in the morning, I was the first person standing in front of the Hungarian Intellectual Property Office, and I submitted my own creation, defined clearly on paper, in person. After this, I had learned that this was the only way to gain exclusive rights and therefore to guarantee commercial safety for our company and our partners. In the following two years, I wrote almost 50 utility models and patents to ensure that we had full protection for our company's products. Nowadays, the pace is slowed, but the same processes are likely to carry on indefinitely into the future. I continue to write my own patents for our products, keeping up to date as new items are designed and launched. By 2010, we had established our first plant in Hungary and since then we have been continuously expanding and building. The centre of the company is still in South Budapest with a network of outside workers and suppliers scattered around the city. Between 2012 and 2014, we started to seek more workers, both in Hungary and overseas. We reckon that if our business in Hungary was challenged by a shortage of labour and the difficulty of finding appropriate property for our needs, 
it made sense to establish subsidiaries in other more favorable locations to have as backups. In the United States, we started to seek appropriate locations between 2013 and 2014. We set up our North American office in Tampa City on the Gulf of Mexico, almost within sight of Mexican shores. If for any reason manufacture and supply of our goods from our European base failed, this gave us the option of relocating manufacturing facilities in Mexico. Our subsequent business plan, locating offices in major markets within easy reach of prime potential manufacturing locations, have continued along similar lines. However, these are just contingency plans. Manufacturing in Mexico or in the Far East is not our main aim. We have never forgotten that remarkably creative people live in Hungary and they have always been at the core of our manufacturing process. We have added European materials, product testing and high-level OECOTEX certification to this foundation. And as a result of this powerful combination, we are able to create top quality European products. Keeping dogs and pets is a changing part of our culture. Owners now want to provide everything for their pets that humans are using for themselves. One of the latest manifestations of this trend is the desire to have activity monitoring devices for pets. This is an area that we, along with other manufacturers, are actively developing. We're determined that any such equipment for dogs has to be just as safe, effective and easy to use as the products for human use. Between 2013 and 2015, we reached a new threshold with direct distributors in over 50 countries around the world and market penetration in many other countries too. As part of the process of becoming an international company, some aspects of our business have become more challenging. We have had to overcome many legal hurdles, such as the type of labels and cards that we are permitted to use, and the measures that we need to take to protect our brand from cheaper, poorer quality copies. One of our biggest challenges and successes has been managing the global growth of our brand. We now have 230 to 240 brands worldwide with this number continually expanding. Each continent, sphere of activity and class of product has different needs. This means that, as well as the Julius K9 main brand, there are sub-brands in the same way as car brands have different sub-groups. When we launch new product collections, we have sub-brands within these and we need to have these processed by Far Eastern, American and other national brand law offices. These brand combinations help consumers learn about our range and make it easier for them to recognize our own original products, giving them a distinct identity that's visibly different to the inferior copy products that are now coming onto the market. Copy products have been and continue to be a great challenge to our business. Our competitors have been larger and more prolific than we had expected and we have had to learn about the best way of dealing with them. We have had to enter into background agreements with the largest brands in the world ever since we first entered the global marketplace. Without these agreements, we could have damaged the interests of the larger chains of stores, along with well-known brands that have been established on the market for many decades. And of course, they could also have damaged our interests. Negotiating these agreements taught us a great deal about diplomacy and we had to build a team to handle these situations effectively. We now have 20 employees who deal with patents and competition law, while we have 24 lawyers worldwide who keep in daily contact with us. We work together to create intellectual properties successfully gaining patents in different markets such as the Far East and United States of America. This painstaking work is critical to securing the future of our brand and the success of our long-term enterprise. It's estimated that our intellectual property is worth over 20 billion euros. We have had a number of notable successes during this period of global growth. In 2017 in Shanghai, at Pet Fair, which is the largest Chinese pet care exhibition, 
We won an award as the pet industry's user's favourite brand. The downside of this, of course, was that a new wave of copy product manufacturers followed, tempted by the immense popularity of our brand's products. Rather than just looking back at awards and other achievements, I prefer to look to the future. Like many other enterprises, we tend to operate in seven-year stretches. Eight years ago, in 2010, we underwent a major phase of patent development. Last year, we started a similar, large new set of design patents. I've started to improve the IDC harness design, along with several related products and accessories, to ensure that our products remain at the forefront of innovation over the next 20 years. We are now also investing and developing in a range of different areas. For example, we are currently developing machines in our factory to help us deal with labour shortages. We have a strong vision for nurturing this powerful brand that we have built, creating a good atmosphere within our company, encouraging our employees to feel part of our enterprise, with everyone working together to produce good results. The Julius K9 business has always been like a family to myself and my wife, Aniko Bakosh. I can recall many occasions such as Christmas and birthdays when we were all sitting together as a group. Then as time passed there were too many of us to sit at the same table. Later again we were too big a crowd to fit into the same room and soon after that we were too numerous to fit in the same restaurant. As the company grew bigger I had to start delegating my workload to others. But I found it difficult to let some problems and tasks go. I felt as if I was unable to extend my protective wings over the business, and I felt that I could no longer share my deep understanding of the enterprise with my whole team. However, it was necessary, and so I started to teach middle and upper level leaders how to do the tasks that I was unable to fit in. Today, many years later, I have been able to delegate even more so that now I can even attend a multi-day event that our company is engaged with in a relaxed and enjoyable way as an outsider. Recently we participated in one of the world's largest pet trade shows in Nuremberg as exhibitors. On this occasion I was no longer the leader. For a change I was the one waiting for instructions. I was following a different brief this time, working with foreign customs officers to take samples of copied products from the shelves of Chinese competitors. This task had some real benefits. It was useful to meet with the customs officers, personally exchanging ideas and learning more about the work that we have in common. Many people today are looking for a source of joy. They struggle, living in a private world of chaos, without a sense of purpose, without a spiritual leader. This is increasingly common, as our societies have become more secular, more logical and without a sense of belief in anything other than the here and now. People have financial desires, of course, but in the process of trying to reach these, they often end up tired and desperate, with a sense of disillusionment. I cannot work with teams like this, apart from the general sense that something is amiss and needs to be addressed for reasons of humanity. The underlying attitude of discontent is bound to have some impact on the finished products of our business. This thought process has caused us to ask ourselves a big question. Should we aim to be more humane compared to the standard pattern of multinational companies, or should we just focus on the numbers, letting our business grow without addressing deeper issues? I have recently chosen the former path, and to date I do not regret doing this. This has led to many changes for my workforce, starting with lifestyle counselling, massage, geriatric therapy and gymnastics. We also help whenever members of our team have problems, whether they are legal issues, home and family challenges, or anything else that needs assistance. Our underlying aim is to create a team of people who are able to enjoy physically and spiritually balanced lives. Times have certainly changed. When old customers and suppliers come to visit, searching for Julius, they are often surprised that they can't find me in the 3,000 square meter three-story office building. They find it hard to believe that we have come as far as we have. And indeed we have come a long way. Some of our employees came to us first when they were young, not much older than children. Over the years they have matured and have had children themselves. They have worked diligently and responsibly, becoming professional people who are a key part of our team. We know each other so well that we don't have to talk to understand what needs to be done. 
I have a great sense of pleasure and satisfaction working with a team like this. I know that I am now able to let some of the older problems go, allowing others to deal with them just as competently as I could do myself. I am able to see myself moving into other areas of the enterprise, seeing the overall picture in a new light. Your blessing.